So in 22 years of Siemens, I've never had the pleasure of having dubstep and Skrillex as a soundtrack for us. This is just showing you energy is starting to talk to young people now, and it's becoming more and more important. We're going to start to interact with the energy system in a way that we never have, and New Brunswick is at the, at the, at the point, at the pinnacle, and a lot of people are asking, why is Siemens opening an office here why is Siemens and New Brunswick working so closely together? The reality is the story begins mostly with New Brunswick power and all of the legacy investments that New Brunswick has made in the electricity system that make it one of the most unique utilities around the world. And, and it's a, a fact that New Brunswick power operates one of the longest electricity value chains on the planet. Nuclear, uh, renewable, wind, all the way through the entire system to your homes with hot water tanks. That is mostly torn apart in most other jurisdictions around the world with all kinds of other intermediaries interacting with the market. And what's going on here in New Brunswick is New Brunswick Power really taking every lever that it can grab onto to do the right thing for the electricity market in New Brunswick. So, if you look at that as a starting point, what's going on in New Brunswick, it, it's kind of interesting to put that into perspective with what's going on in the world. And there's a, a thing going on really that a lot of people have talked about, but they, it's hard to put it into perspective, right? Mega trends, uh, population increase, uh, aging, all of us getting older, urbanization, moving into cities, climate change, um, and, and, and really these things becoming understood facts, uh, where does that fit into with what's going on in New Brunswick? The, the important thing is the, the, the main points are common to us all. Um, the older I get, the more reliable I want my electricity to be, right? It's a, it's a fact. The older I get, uh, the more reliable the system needs to be because one of the problems that's happening is the older we all get, the less people that are going to be around there helping to make systems work. So how can we make things better and more reliable? Energy is the true currency of the economy. Uh, a lot of people have said to me, thank goodness you guys are doing what you're doing because uh, we need you to do the right things with energy so that there's enough money left over for health care. Another perspective is uh, people say, what's the hardest and biggest challenge in deploying smart grid? Uh, one of the biggest problems is that all the smart guys are planning on retiring, not necessarily deploying the smart grid. So we've got these big trends and they're hitting us right now. And the, the fact of the matter is, um, you know, if you look at where uh, the population growth is and if you look at movement towards cities and if you look at the, the fact that cities are actually the, the big places of power consumption and the big places of uh, CO2 generation. Um, you know, you say, what can we do? How can I impact that? How can we make a difference? And, and most people in New Brunswick would say, this is a pretty clean place. I really don't find a big problem with the urbanization thing. We're pretty much rural. The reality is that even in New Brunswick, you can have an impact and the impact, the outcome will be energy reliability, energy security, clean energy, renewable energy, sustainable energy. 
and that's right at the top of the vision of where New Brunswick Power wants to go. Those are the exciting points in the alignment that Brett talked about, that Michelle talked about, that Don talked about between the government and the utility, but also between Siemens and New Brunswick so that we have a path to work towards and a vision that's very clear and a vision that is about sustainability. So the point though is if you look at what's going on in the world and put it into perspective to New Brunswick, is that New Brunswick is a perfect starting point to bring all kinds of new technology together to innovate, to research and invest, and that's what Siemens is doing. Uh, we've opened the office up in the Knowledge Park. There's a couple of different streams of, of work going on there, but together with New Brunswick, New Brunswick Power, we're going to start solving problems for all kinds of places in the world. In this uh, slide set now that I'm going to show you, I'm going to go through the animation slowly, is going to show you the problems that other places in the world are facing and in fact how fortunate we already are, um, but also kind of encourages us to um, cherish what we have and make it better. So you're going to see here now uh, some pictures. Jakarta and Delhi, 1975, basically it's like a heat map of the city size. And then the next thing that happens is 1990, it's getting a little bigger, more population, 2000, and 2010. It just blossomed. And that's in an area where everybody is moving to because the areas they're coming from don't even have electricity. A third of the world population doesn't have electricity yet. So the challenges that are facing the world and the electricity sector are enormous. And these kinds of concentrations of populations are really challenging the local systems. And New Brunswick is a place where you can develop that kind of innovation. And because of the strength of the utility, the integrated utility from you know, generation through to uh, the customer and hot water and all the innovation and ideas that Michelle talked about, reduce and shift demand. This is a place where you can grow from. And I think uh, the intention here is really, it's not just about um, solving long-term visionary things, it's about establishing immediate next steps that have positive impacts. And, and there's a lot of um, uh, I'm going to say uh, uh, positive feedback that when we start solving these problems in New Brunswick, they're going to be uh, economic growth engines. They're going to be facilitators of bringing together the uh, information communi uh, communications technology uh, sector, the energy sector, the academic sector, together to spawn new ideas, ideas we haven't got yet even resolved, to bring solutions uh, towards enabling more renewables, uh, enabling clean energy, and moving forward in CO2 reduction um, by uh, providing opportunities for decentralized energy uh, generation and understanding the variabilities that need to be addressed, and they're significant. Uh, and, and Michelle said, you know, the wind blows when the wind blows, and the sun shines when the sun shines, and the river flows when the river flows, so to speak, right? Renewables are generally all about doing what Mother Earth does, and that was kind of the tent of the video. The, the Earth isn't changing, we're changing how we interact with it, and we have to interact with it smarter and more environmentally friendly. We have to enable ourselves to take advantage of those things, and there are new technologies coming, and you know, most of it is uh, uh, renewable. The intents are to establish and facilitate the possibilities of more renewable energies as further pressure from the growth in the world takes uh, more and more of the oil out of the market. The thing that happens though when renewables get put into the network, they're placed all over the place normally and normal electricity curves uh, change into things that are much much more dramatic. And these are actually reverse energy flows with, say, a solar rooftop somewhere out in a neighborhood in a rural area. And then how does the utility manage that? Reliability is an issue. 
and we've had experiences with uh, reliability problems in the Northeast, the big blackout for three days. Uh, these are the kinds of things uh, last uh, not long ago in India, India uh, 690 people affected for uh, some of them over a week. Um, challenges uh, to improve reliability now with more extreme weather potentially coming. How do you isolate faults? How do you uh, reconfigure the system? How do you raise uh, the, the quality of electricity, uh, the, uh, the reduce the outages, and ensure that there's great energy available for new industry to come? And so uh, this reliability is recognizing that the grid has changed. Today's grid is a one-directional grid, and on the right-hand side, on the bottom, a little provocatively, more or less a blind grid. The reality is the new grid is going to be a bidirectional grid, and you see on the bottom right-hand side, self-monitoring and highly visible. What's going to happen is customers are going to have choice, customers are going to be engaged in the market, um, customers will become producing consumers, Customers will continue to use more energy. Customers will have opportunity for conservation. But the reality is electricity is going to become more and more important, probably the ultimate form of energy we consume. So with all that going on, what do you do? Now this picture shows you a modern grid. And on the left-hand side, it's going to talk about challenges that a company like New Brunswick Power is faced with. And on the right-hand side are going to be opportunities that New Brunswick is going to have in addressing them. The first thing is more renewable generation is going to come. And it's not necessarily about anyone saying it should come. It's about the opportunities that consumers are going to have to choose it because the costs are coming down. And consumers are going to be able to invest systematically in the generation of electricity. Where I live in the north of Toronto, in Ontario, there is an electricity generation co-op that's been formed, and it is to put solar panels on the roofs of municipal buildings. It's a systematic private investment, a cooperative to generate energy. And you can buy into that shares for $1,000 a piece. But similarly in Ontario, I can buy a solar rooftop for my garage and put seven gigawatts on my garage and have a guaranteed rate of return based on their feed-in tariffs that will actually surpass anything that I'm seeing right now in a standard investment portfolio. Those kinds of things are going to come to the consumer. What New Brunswick Power is doing is sorting out to be ready for those possibilities. And, and the, there's a lot of challenges in all jurisdictions to enable the consumer the right way. New Brunswick Power is planning their way and, and enabling the possibilities for that kind of interaction. So the other things that go on is, so you get renewables in, you have to balance the system in new ways. You have uh, normally in every circumstance limited generation capacity or grid capacity, things they call congestion, where the interconnects are, where the transmission lines meet with the distribution lines. You need to address those because the new utility needs to run leaner. That's what we all want, because when, when things run leaner, we anticipate they're more cost effect, effective and efficient. So those are exactly the points where Michelle was talking about. How can you run leaner? How can you move the peak around, fill in the valleys, avoid generation investments? That's underway. And then, of course, at the rate of innovation today, the challenge is really, is the stuff we're doing out there at the right level of evolution? Is it too old? Is it being abused or used or overused? Asset management is critical in enabling systems that will support reliability and automatic uh, outage prevention approaches is, is absolutely now what's anticipated in a new lean running utility. Ultimately, all this comes to a point of cost efficiency and understanding where are the trade-offs between all the investments and the emissions of the system so that you can have clean, reliable energy, particularly with, with the notion of electric vehicles. There's no point to drive uh, uh, dirty things around if, if we can avoid it. Electricity and electric vehicles are another great way to reduce emissions. 
And, and while New Brunswick is ideally situated for electric vehicles because you have actually a very, very high content of clean energy uh, and low emission energy in the mix, um, the, the, the benefits go beyond uh, reducing carbon emissions. The reality is if you drive an electric car, you normally end up liking to drive the electric car because it's a new chassis, a new technology, new performance, and it is a great experience. So that finally turns into how do you manage the revenue the best way possible and not having any inefficiencies in the system result in any surprising uh, losses. So it, you know, that's the story, a different story. That's the story that's going on globally. And, and this is the story Michelle put forward as the activities that are underway locally. But what it is is about enabling and empowering the New, the New Brunswick marketplace with a utility that's ready for all of the possibilities that are coming down the pipe. And, and the, the reality is that the things that, that New Brunswick Power has in mind is a, is a unique combination specific for New Brunswick based on their investments, but also related to the experiences that Siemens has had around the world in other projects. So there's a combination of uh, tested best practice and experience, uh, a, a special way to apply that, but a way also to synthesize it into the New Brunswick market and, and capture the value and, and not necessarily, uh, I'm going to say, capture the mistakes. So one example, uh, for instance, is in North Carolina, exactly the, the uh, targets and approach that New Brunswick has of reducing shift demand. Uh, here in this particular case, the primary driver was exactly as you have it, avoiding the new investments and avoiding the new investments in generation is where that net present value comes from that everyone's been talking about. So if you do the right thing, manage the system the right way, you can capture that net present value. Um, also in, in Europe, in Germany, uh, for instance, this is a picture of Munich. On uh, the front is uh, basically the, the Olympic Stadium, 1976. On the right is the BMW headquarters. Uh, this is a very large utility with a very large population base. But they took, uh, took the approach there to bring together various distributed uh, generation resources within the jurisdiction of the community, more or less as a municipal utility engaging with generation and, and aggregating that also to manage the best way possible for the community. We were doing other activities all over uh, the world. We could probably have an hour of these types of slides. But the, the most important thing is we're bringing that together here in New Brunswick, for New Brunswick. And we're, we're doing that with three focus uh, areas to keep a holistic view. One is a center of competency. Another is research and development, and the final is a, is a touch with the academic community. And so we've opened the offices up in the Knowledge Park today. We already have 23 people there, and what we're working on is the, the, the pure requirements of New Brunswick power, but putting that together as a global reference so that the core competencies we have here in Fredericton are actually going to be a building block for us in North America and the world. Additionally, and importantly, um, because uh, New Brunswick has, has uh, proposed New Brunswick Power in the province as a living lab, uh, and because not everything is, is uh, already known and understood, we have put R&D into Fredericton. And importantly, the R&D is, is R&D that, in fact, Siemens Canada had to uh, really uh, put emphasis on to Siemens globally because New Brunswick in Canada was competing for this kind of work with the world. Uh, the R&D that, that we have here now is actually R&D that we've moved from Princeton, uh, but it was just as well placed into India, Brazil, uh, other locations in the United States. In New Brunswick, under, under very close uh, scrutiny, uh, won out in that process, in fact, and is now a recognized global R&D center for Siemens, and, and we're very, very proud of that. Uh, New Brunswick is going to gain from that, and we're hoping that that is a, a, a bit of an, I'm going to say, a, 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 a boost to the knowledge and understanding of what New Brunswick has. It's also a way for New Brunswick to 
integrate their experiences directly to Siemens, so it's a close connection. And it's also a way for Siemens uh, to work with New Brunswick in the context of the living lab to make sure that there is truly always a best practice that is ready for the global marketplace. So New Brunswick, New Brunswick Power is, is actually contributing a, a very, very critical component to the, the mutual success of everyone. Um, and finally, because you need to, and this, this was a, a big point, what are we doing about enabling and educating and being sustainable for our young? We've made a commitment to the universities in uh, New Brunswick, uh, and, and it's a, a, a long-term approach, and we're hopeful that uh, we can work together in establishing curriculum, establishing training, establishing further innovation, and using that uh, as a catalyst with the ICT sector to really you know, potentially bring forward new business opportunities, new innovation, uh, and new New Brunswick entrepreneurs for problems we haven't even yet considered. So all that together um, turns into different jobs, and, and specifically they're green collar jobs. Um, they're uh, uh, normally, I'm gonna say, a higher education, higher payroll kind of job, very sustainable. And, and we're really happy with, with being able to be in New Brunswick because, in fact, we've, uh, we've done most of our hiring with local New Brunswickers. And I got the question today, and I, I still have to go through the inventory, how many of these guys are graduates of UNB? And, and happily, a lot of them. And at what levels did those guys graduate? Actually, all levels. So there's some PhD guys from UMB in there, and there's some undergraduates, and there's some co-op guys, and everything. So th this is going to be a great place to develop new talent and help us get through the swell of folks retiring. It's also going to be a great place for innovation, and I think it's going to have a multiplier effect. And one of the ways that we're trying to do that on the left-hand side, for instance, is the name of a fellow called Stefano Paoli. Is he here right now? Stefano, are you here? Stefano, you can stand up for a second just to make the point. He's a, a, a fellow, a dude we imported from Italy. Uh, he's been working on some really big projects there, but he's, he's been here already a couple of, year, of months, uh, probably just a few weeks away of, of finding his house and a few months away from bringing his family, and then he's going to be here paying taxes. But the most important thing is he's going to be the guy that's doing the knowledge transfer from the world of Siemens into the local team in Fredericton. The guy on the right, Pierre Mullen, are you in? I got a, you're all on the left. Pierre, born, born and raised Fredericton, right? Yep. And uh, a, a very fortunate uh, catch for us. I, 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 I'll call it a catch, but I mean, we didn't, we didn't hook you, it was mutual. But uh, the, the fact of the matter is there is a vibrant ICT sector here. And of the 23 people that we've got on board, um, yes, there's a couple from overseas, but they're actually going to be local guys. Um, the good news is they're probably mostly outdoors type people with families that want to be in a nice place. But the bulk of the 23, uh, probably 90% is local hire, right, guys, roughly? Yeah, all of the R&D team was hired. Locally. The entire R&D team was hired local, and, and that's actually a testimonial to the universities. So I'm going to wrap it up before Don kicks me off. The big question everybody seems to be asking is why New Brunswick? From our perspective, it's almost like a question like, what do you mean, why New Brunswick, right? We thought you guys knew you were pretty cool. But, but the reality is uh, there is a strong talent pool. There is a vibrant university community. There is a vibrant uh, place to work in that knowledge park. It's a beautiful office complex, and we're happy about being there. The utility itself has got some very, very unique assets that are, in fact, uh, we, we've now assessed that in a global context. In fact, in, in Siemens Canada is pleased that we could draw the global company's attention to a Canadian opportunity because as much as this is a success for New Brunswick, we consider it a success for us as Canada. And, and it, it was very, very cool when we got the message communicated that Siemens in Canada could work this way with New Brunswick Power and the core of that is actually that alignment in the long-term vision. There's something to work towards here. 
this is very meaningful work, was the words Michelle used. I'm going to say the things we're doing in the energy sector matter. And New Brunswick is really putting itself in a position where you're going to be a Canadian reference and we're going to do everything to make you a global reference in the knowledge and experience that we collectively garner in New Brunswick, in the Knowledge Park, in Fredericton, with the ICT community is going to be something that we're all going to be working together to commercialize and export. So that's the good opportunity. So really, New Brunswick, a perfect place to showcase the utility of the future. And I really, really enjoy all the questions and thoughts you might have. So we'll take it from there, right, Don?